Good morning, Bimblers. And you join me to the side of the Lee branch of the Leeds Liverpool Canal and also to the side of Scotsman's Flash here in Wigan. I've been a very good boy and I've done lots of night feeds. So Mrs Bimble has let me play out for the day. So we're having a look round Wigan. So let's stop messing about. And let's bimble. The name Wigan can be traced back all the way to the 7th century but no one's quite sure where the word actually comes from. It could come from the Celtic language. They had a word called Wiccanus and that means villagers or people of a settlement. You also get the old Welsh word Wiccant which means the same thing and the old Breton word Wiccon which also means villagers or people of a settlement. There are people that believe that Wigan was a person. And that's because Wigan used to be called Tre Wigan. T-R-E Wigan. And Tre meant homestead. So it was the homestead of a man called Wigan. Mr Wigan. And you can't forget that in Britonic, Wig means dwelling. So it's all as clear as mud. Wigan wasn't mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086 either. It was thought to be part of Newton and Willows. In fact, it was listed the parish church of Wigan was St Oswald's Church in Warrington, you know, in Winnick. And the name Winnick, Winwick, that's the way it's spelt. Well, that points towards all this Wickant and Wickon, Winwick, Wickon, Wigan. Wigan is now part of Greater Manchester, but historically and ceremonially, it's part of Lancashire and with it being part of Lancashire and me being stood in front of a church St James's church behind me was designed and built by Edward Graham Paley I don't know how I find them all he built another church here in Wigan in the town centre but we'll save that for another day it was built between 1863 and 1865 and it was all paid for by a local rich lad by the name of Nathaniel Eckersley and the church is dedicated to St James because of his late brother James Eckersley Nathaniel Eckersley was the High Sheriff of Lancashire and he was also the Member of Parliament for Wigan under the Conservative Party the church cost £15,000 to build which in today's money is about £1.4 million but Nathaniel Eckersley could afford it he owned a coal mine and that was big business. Do you know what I mean? Speaking of do you know what I mean? Let's bimble. If only, if only you knew I've heard what they said Ignored what I read And looked to the bright side so here's to the bad times, forgotten in good lives. I will, I will, I will let you down. I will, I will, I will let you down. I'll take off my shoes and dance to the good news. Broken smiles, well, they will turn it brown. Smiles, well, they will turn it brown. So take off your shoes and dance to the good news. Left to long. Picture a smaller, 
that's world weary Bimbler at 12 years old he had no idea that he'd be making videos of himself riding his bike at that time my bike would have been a Shimano bike called Mammoth and me and my mate Chris Beatman had identical bikes bought from the bike shop in Latchford Village in Warrington it was that 12 year old future Bimbler that bought the 7 inch single of Do You Know What I Mean by Oasis and the front cover of that single was taken here at Woodcock Walk in Wigan it was designed and created by a company called Microdot and it was all the brainchild of a Brian Cannon but why did they choose an alleyway in Wigan? Oasis were the biggest band in the world at that point so they could have done it in New York City or by the pyramids in Egypt if they'd wanted to well the reason is Brian Cannon's from Wigan and if he did the photograph in Wigan he could use all his friends and family in the picture and he wouldn't have to pay extras the original idea for the sleeve was thought up by Noel Gallagher he wanted a scene with a street preacher giving a sermon that was because of the lyrics of the song all my people right here right now but it was actually Liam Gallagher that was the voice of reason and he said he didn't want to get religion involved in it he said it was all about turning people on not putting them off so if you look at the single cover the preacher isn't dressed as a preacher he's just wearing a suit and holding a book that street preacher was one of Brian Cannon's mates Mick Maguire and one of the other people in the crowd was Brian Cannon's dad he actually featured on another two Oasis singles for some might say and the master plan Woodcock Walk is known as the blind steps to people here in Wigan that's because it used to lead up to a blind school and there used to be a gym to the side and that's where the preacher was hanging out but it seems to be a fancy posh new house now they actually had to pay a glazier £70 to take the window out of the gym because the window that they had there didn't open they also had to pay £1,000 to Wigan Police to send three constables down to keep all the fans at bay I've informed Wigan Police of my presence today and they're keeping all my fans at bay only none of them are teenage girls they're all middle aged fellas
Well, Bimblers, it's a monumental day. The big coat's off. I've got too hot. It's the first time this year. And it's no wonder I'm hot and sweaty. Because it's rather hard work going down this Leeds Liverpool Canal. We're using it as our little motorway today to link up some of these points of interest in Wigan. Most of the points of interest in Wigan have something to do with coal, whether it's a rich fella that built a church, a vinyl record made out of hydrocarbons, or bits of old coal mine, and that's what we're off to see now. The Leeds-Liverpool Canal was basically built to get coal out of Wigan and down into the port of Liverpool. And from Wigan Pier to Liverpool, it's rather a flat affair. There's only six locks. But from Wigan Pier to the top of this big hill, a two mile stretch, there's 20 locks. Bear in mind there's only 91 locks in total on the Leeds Liverpool Canal, and it's 125 miles long. In this two mile stretch, you have locks 65 to 85. And it can certainly bring a sweat on. But anyway, it's well worth it, because we're off to Aspel to see some coal mining paraphernalia. Let's bimble. Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A mistake that made the distance or a trying way to live Maybe it's the time that you grabbed at my arms And electricity flowed from my shoulders to palms In a white hot glow Leaving white cold scars Left fair and on show Just to prove they were ours Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A novelty improvement And so we reach Aspel on the outskirts of Wigan In fact it's the last bit of Wigan before you get to Bolton. And not only was Aspel home to some of Wigan's collieries, it's home to some of the oddities of Wigan's collieries. Like this behind me. A pit furnace chimney. It's not only coal that you found underground. It's methane. All those plants rotting down millions of years ago creating the coal also created methane. And there's large pockets of it trapped underground. And when you're down there digging for coal, you can come across it. It's highly noxious as well as highly flammable and you can't breathe it in. That's why coal miners used to take canaries down the mine. If the canary died from the gas, well it meant that you were probably gonna die shortly after. So they needed a way to get the coal out of the mine without the miners dropping dead. And they come up with a clever solution in the days before the ventilator and the extractor fan. What they did was build this big chimney and light a fire underneath it which seems very dangerous because of all the highly flammable methane but it's what they did that fire at the bottom of the chimney would draw air down the shaft and out through the chimney and it would circulate the air around the pit as well as getting rid of some of the methane as well by burning it off this furnace chimney was for the wall hay pit and it was operational between 1840 and 1870 and then it closed but they left the chimney here for us to come and bimble to but it's not only methane gas under the ground they had problems with water as well and there's something else here in Aspel that helps you get the water out let's bimble or maybe it's the time that you close both your eyes and you pouted your lips as you waited for mine in the soft red glow of your soft cold arms Serotonin burns holes through my veins, to my heart Maybe it worked 
maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it's the time that I wanted to say That my limbs won't move more than two feet away from your day Glow side luminescent sparks I could burst into flames from one beat from your heart Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Well, Bimblers, we reached Journey's End, Athball Pumping Station. We've crossed over the border into Bolton, which makes the name of this video slightly fraudulent. We've also put the coat back on because it went chilly again. I think it's intermediate coat weather, hoodie season. Anyway, if you live in the northwest or you've visited, you'll know that it rains quite a lot certainly rained a lot last week ruined my train is getting to this all that rain seeps into the ground and if you've got a coal mine down there all the rain seeps into that it makes it quite dangerous to dig out the coal you have to get the water out we're actually not that far away from the wet earth colliery which had a similar problem and James Brindley used the power of the river Irwell to get the water out of the coal mine the very water that was seeping into the coal mine he used to get it out again. Clever chap. Here at Aspel Pumping Station, they use the power of steam to pump the water out. They use five Lancashire boilers and a giant engine. It was all built by Wigan Coal and Iron in order to get the water out of their pits. But they found that a lot of the smaller operations in the area also needed to get the water out. And they couldn't afford a giant pumping engine like this one. So they used to charge them and they invited them to dig shafts to go underneath the pumping station so all the water would run down here and it would be pumped out, of course, for a nominal fee. By all accounts, the water was actually quite clean. That's because of the type of coal they used to dig out in this region. It wasn't your normal kind of coal with all the dust. It was something called cannel coal or candle coal. It was sort of like dried tar. It's what you call bitumous coal meaning that it's full of bitumen. Bitumen is like tarmac or asphalt if you're from America. It was expensive stuff. One, because it was so clean and you wouldn't get dust all in your house. And two, because they used it to make paraffin or kerosene if you're from America. They started pumping the water out here in 1871, but they stopped in 1932. That was because Wigan Coal and Iron stopped digging out coal in the area. And that meant that all those smaller collieries also had to close, a little bit prematurely for their liking, but they couldn't afford a pumping engine. Up until 1955, there would have been a big chimney sticking out of this pump house, and it was all left derelict, like it is today. Fascinating. A bit tricky to get to, but well worth it. <laughs> 